Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to exchange robots in the 3D world. This can be very helpful if you want to try out different robots in your solution. For example, in the 3D world, I program a robot to pick parts from this conveyor and place them over here. So let's say we want to test out the solution with a different robot. Well, the first step is to find the robot you want to exchange with this robot. So go over here to the eCatalog panel, expand the collections view, expand models by type, and then click robots. Now this will display all the robots that are connected to my Webby catalog. So you can see we have over a thousand different types of robots in our Webby catalog library. So you have a lot to choose from. Let's keep things simple by using a visual components robot. So over here I'll expand robots and scroll down and let's make the e-catalog just a bit bigger. So I'll drag it over there, make the collections view a bit bigger. You can see here are all the robot manufacturers and the components we have. So I'll click visual components because we're the best. <laughs> all right. And right now in the 3D world, I'm using the generic articulated robot version 3. So I'll just use the first version of the robot, which looks a bit different. So I'll drag this item into the 3D world. And notice that this robot is selected. And now I want to exchange this selected robot with the robot that I have set up over here in my solution. Now the next step is to go to the program tab. So I'll go to the program tab. And as long as you have a robot selected, the exchange robots command here will be available. So it's in the tools group. So click the exchange robots command. And now in the 3D world, you have to select the robot you want to exchange the currently selected robot with. And any available robot that is compatible will be highlighted yellow. So this robot's highlighted yellow, so I'll click it. And now it's highlighted green, that means it will be the robot to exchange with the selected one. And now to confirm the command, I'll go over here to the Exchange Robots task pane and click the Apply button. So notice what happens. The selected robot I had is now switched over here, and it's also connected to the tool, and it has the same program. So if I select this robot here with the jaw command, notice now its program is displayed here. And the robot I exchanged it with over here, notice that its program is just empty, and it's no longer connected to that tool. So if I select this robot here, let's test out the program. So I'll run the simulation. And let's see that robot pick and place that part. So it moves into strike, it goes down, picks up the part, and then it places it over there. Great. Let's go and reset the simulation. Now what I just showed you might be all fun and easy, but what happens when you want to exchange different types of robots from other manufacturers? Well, I'll show you how that works now. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes you have to do additional steps. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the Home tab, and let's find a different robot. So let's actually just use the ABB robots. So over here in the eCatalog panel, I'll click ABB. And let's use an IRB 1400. So I'll just drag that one into the 3D world, like so. Looks a bit different. So I have this robot selected, so let's exchange it with this robot. So I'll go back to the Program tab, click the Exchange Robots command. And now I could exchange this robot with either this robot here or this robot here. So I want to simulate the robot here with this program I have in this robot. So I'll select this robot here, click the apply command to exchange robots, and the exchange out, great. So let's run the simulation, see how this works out. So will it pick the robot? Sorry, will it pick the component? <laughs> and it picks the part, and let's see it place it over there in the compare. All right, and it does that. Now it seems like something may have collided with the robot when it was placing the part over here. Now to check that out, I'll go ahead and reset the simulation. And let's go and turn on a collision detector in the 3D world. So I have this robot selected here. I'll go to the detectors checkbox here in the collision detection group. And notice that I'm using a selection versus world. So what I have selected in the 3D world can be compared to other components in the 3D world for detection. So I'm detecting all collisions. And I'm not showing any of this options here. And let's go and turn this on. So I'll make the detector I have active. And let's actually stop on collision, see how that works, and run the simulation. And what happens is that the robot's tool might collide with the conveyor or the part, but it looks like it didn't stop it there. And now the robot moves over, and yep, as I suspected, the robot collided with the conveyor. So we did exchange the robot and the program's working fine, it's just that the robot is in a different position because, you know, it's geometry, so a bit different from the robot I exchanged it with. Now an easy way to fix this might be to just reposition the robot, but I don't want to move the robot positions I have set up in the program. So what I'll do is I'll reset the simulation and I'll go and now select the robot as a component. So I'll use the select command here and click the robot in the 3D world to select it. 
And I don't want to move these robot positions, so what I'll do is I'll lock them to the 3D world. So over here in the lock positions group, I'll click the option here called to two world. And what that means is that the robot positions are now locked to the 3D world. They're not moving with their reference base or tool coordinate system. So now I'll use the move tool. Let's move the robot just over here, just a hair. That's more than a hair, but okay. And now if I run the simulation, the robot shouldn't collide with this conveyor. And notice the positions, they stayed put. So if I now run the simulation again, let's see the robot picked apart. It picks the part. And yeah, sometimes the tool will actually collide with the part and it will show up as a collection, but I'll just keep on running the simulation. And now let's see what happens. And yep, it does not collide with the conveyor. All right, and once again, the tool kind of collides with the part and the con uh, conveyor. But in another video, I'll show you how to set up your own collision detector to kind of avoid these issues. So let's reset the simulation. And that concludes the video. So if you have any more questions, please visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.